Good afternoon, and welcome to a very strange episode of The Angry Astronaut, even stranger than the topics that I oftentimes talk about. We have explored a variety of different ways of traveling between the stars on this channel, all of them being restricted by Einstein's speed limit, shall we say, the inability to travel either at the speed of light or faster than the speed of light. But as we've investigated these various types of propulsion, well, one thing is always a problem, and that is energy and the fuel requirements. It requires about as much energy to push a single metric ton to 99% of the speed of light as it requires to power our entire civilization for a year. It's an insane amount of energy, far beyond what anybody would really consider to be practical. It's the sort of thing that might keep civilizations from traveling between the stars. And yet, interestingly enough, there's a way to harness the power of black holes, different than a previous episode that I did on this channel where you're just harnessing the radiation being generated by a very small black hole. No, we're talking about harnessing the enormous gravitational power of black holes in order to fling enormous ships between the stars. We're talking ships the size of planets. Good afternoon once again. Welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So I'm sure a lot of you are believing that I have once again taken leave of my senses talking about stuff like this, but it is indeed true. One particular physicist with a great deal of time on his hands, it seems, found a way to harness the energies of a black hole. Now, this has been done in the past. An individual named uh, Dyson, he was one that came up with the idea of the Dyson sphere, also came up with the idea of a Dyson slingshot. That is to say, to slingshot your ship around a black hole, taking advantage of the gravitational energy, and that would do the job. Of course, then again, you're passing ridiculously close to the event horizon, getting bathed in enormous amounts of radiation and the gravitational forces at work would probably rip your ship apart. But there's another way to take advantage of the colossal energies trapped within a black hole that doesn't require that you bring your ship anywhere near the black hole. Well, by nowhere near, I'm talking millions of kilometers, not light years here. You'd still need to be in the same solar system as the black hole. But nevertheless, if you could do all of that, the amount of energy pent up inside black holes is sufficient to push entire planets between the stars at relativistic speeds. And indeed, there may be evidence that we have observed recently to suggest that there may be extraterrestrial civilizations who are doing just that. First of all, however, I'd like to thank the new Patreon supporters that this channel has picked up in the couple of days that have passed since I released my last video. Thank you very much, Mike Gore, Guy Green, Stephen Lavelle, Steve Meacham, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, and also Lawrence. And then on top of that, Alan O'Donnell increased his membership at the same time. Thank you so much. Once again, if we manage to reach that 1% subscriber to Patreon subscriber ratio, well, this channel will completely transform in terms of what I can do and the type of content that I can release. And all the details are in the description if you are interested. Okay, let's get on to the topic at hand. 
The individual who came up with this extreme idea is physicist and astronomer David Kipping from Columbia University in New York. Now, what he did is expound upon an idea proposed by the legendary Freeman Dyson, who, as I said before, came up with the Dyson sphere of exploiting the gravitational energy that exists in close proximity to a black hole, forces capable of swallowing up everything, including light. Now, utilizing a gravitational gravitational slingshot very much in the same way that the Voyager spacecraft utilized Jupiter and other planets in order to increase their velocity through the solar system, Freeman Dyson proposed using the enormous gravitational energies of a black hole to slingshot a spacecraft to near light speed velocities. However, as I mentioned before, the dangerous radiation levels and enormous gravitational tidal forces that exist in close proximity to a black hole would almost certainly tear your ship apart or kill the passengers. But there's another way to harness this energy, as David Kipping pointed out. What you do instead is utilize a modified version of the breakthrough starshot propulsion. That is to say, utilizing high-energy lasers striking modified light sails to push vehicles pulled by those light sails up to relativistic velocities. But Kipping's idea is this, to quote, essentially perform a Dyson slingshot remotely by firing a collimated particle or energy beam to the side of the event horizon of a black hole. If you choose the angle carefully, the beam loops around like a halo and comes back at you. If the black hole is moving towards you, then the beam returns blue shifted. Now, what does that mean, blue shifted? Well, it's impossible for the photons in a laser beam to go any faster than the speed of light. However, they are picking up additional energy from the black hole. That energy is translated into a frequency shift, a higher energy frequency, in other words, blue shifted. So when you fire the beam, your ship receives a momentum kick, and when the beam returns and strikes your ship, or your laser sail, shall we say, you get another momentum kick. This is how the ship is propelled, very much like a light sail, but the beam actually returns with more energy than it departed, since it siphoned some of the kinetic energy from the black hole. So not only did you accelerate, but your ship actually gained stored energy, kind of like energy from a battery. So this is a system that is allowing a ship to utilize the energy of a black hole as if it were storing it like some sort of colossal galactic battery. And here's the truly amazing thing. The size of your ship is only limited by the size of the black hole. You're picking up enormous amounts of energy based on the mass and the momentum of the black hole in question. Now, if you use a binary pair of black holes orbiting one another at relativistic speeds, and there are, by the way, at least a million of these scattered across the galaxy, then you pick up enormous amounts of momentum. So you could, at least in theory, propel ships the size of planets up to relativistic velocities, assuming, of course, that they had large enough light sails to pull them. We're talking light sails the size of solar systems. Yeah, this is next level shit. But at the same time, exciting stuff when one considers that you are picking up enormous amounts of free energy without having to consume any propellant whatsoever. You would, of course, have to be in the same solar system as a black hole. The system only works if the laser passes within 5 to 50 times the diameter of the black hole, so we're not talking about a huge distance here. It would definitely have to be a ship within the same solar system as the black hole, actually a lot closer than that. But once you are able to do it, you would have access to virtually unlimited energy to travel between stars. And by binary black holes could be set up as sort of a highway system. As long as you could set up your first interstellar base at a binary pair of black holes, you could, in theory, travel from one binary pair to the other 
forever because you could slow down utilizing the same principle as you approached another binary pair of black holes. That is to say, simply fire your laser at the binary pair. It slingshots it around, hits your light sail, and decelerates you rather than accelerating you until eventually you passed into orbit around the next binary pair. Now, of course, the idea of establishing a civilization orbiting black holes throughout the galaxy would be met with a little bit of skepticism. After all, being that close to black holes would mean that your population would be bathed in an unhealthy amount of radiation at the very least. But of course, we're probably not talking about a civilization anything like ours. We're probably talking about a civilization that no longer relies on biological bodies that are vulnerable to radiation. We are instead talking about a hyper-advanced machine civilization that would be able to harness this kind of insane power. However, the principle is still very exciting. The fact that you can get around the enormous energy requirements needed to accelerate to relativistic speeds and the fact that you can accelerate enormous amounts of mass to relativistic speeds, well, that prospect alone is incredibly exciting. But I mean, come on, we can talk about these concepts all day, but does it really mean that somebody could actually do this in the future? If not our civilization, perhaps another? Kipping points out that the halo system might not only be useful for traveling between stars, it could also be used as a colossal energy source for advanced civilizations because you can pick up enormous amounts of energy simply by firing your laser against orbiting the black hole, and when it returns, absorbing that energy and transferring it into your power grid. Again, a machine civilization that requires energy far more than it requires any other type of natural resource would probably want to make use of an energy source like a halo battery. So once again, do we see any evidence of this being done in the galaxy right now? Well, interestingly enough, perhaps so. A team of researchers led by University of Cologne Institute of Astrophysics researcher Florian Peisker discovered a curious star cluster close to our galaxy's central supermassive black hole known as Sagittarius A, an absolutely colossal black hole with an event horizon so huge that the halo drive would probably work as far away as a billion kilometers from the center of the black hole, a very, very useful halo engine or halo battery. And interestingly enough, they found what they call a stellar fountain of youth, a shockingly high number of young stars in a region where there should be none. It's a stellar cluster designated IRS-13, first identified a couple of decades ago, but it was difficult to assess how old the various stars were. Using data collected by a wide range of telescopes scopes over many years, Beisker and his colleagues found that the stars in IRS-13 were much younger than expected. The stars were about 100,000 years old, which is extremely young in cosmic terms. For example, of course, our star is 4.6 billion years old, 46,000 times older than the stars of IRS-13. Quote, the analysis of IRS-13 and the accompanying interpretation of the cluster is the first attempt to unravel a decade-old mystery about the unexpectedly young stars in the galactic center. This is a quote from Peisker, by the way. In addition to IRS-13, there is a star cluster, the so-called S-cluster, which is even closer to the black hole and also consists of young stars. They are also significantly younger than would be possible according to most accepted theories. Now, the discovery of such an abundance of young stellar bodies at the heart of the Milky Way is shocking because it was previously thought that high energy radiation and immense tidal forces generated by the gravity in this central region, that is to say, near Sagittarius A, which by the way has a mass the equivalent of 4.3 million suns, well, that should disrupt all star formation. It should have prevented 
prevented young stars from gathering around Sagittarius A and the vicinity of the galactic center. And this isn't the only shock. On top of that, the James Webb Space Telescope was used to discover water ice at the Milky Way's galactic center. And this is connected to the young stars in the region because water ice is commonly found in disks of dusty material that surround young stars called protoplanetary disks. Once again, this should not exist in this region. Now, Peisker believes that the recently discovered clusters of young stars at the center of our galaxy could be explained by these clusters migrating towards the galactic center after they came into existence by some sort of cataclysmic collision or some other tidal forces. But, of course, they're not very sure about that, and they're also not very sure as to the exact method that would move so many young stars into such close proximity to the center of our galaxy where these sorts of things shouldn't exist. But when I run into situations where natural explanations start to fall flat, I start looking for artificial explanations, which of course is in sharp contrast to most astronomers. But then again, I don't have an astronomical reputation to uphold, so let me just say this. Sagittarius A has the potential to be the most useful and colossal source of energy available to a civilization in the galaxy. What if a hyper-advanced civilization were to start engineering star systems close to this incredibly useful source of energy. If stars have a hard time forming close to the most useful source of energy you can find, then make your own star systems. And again, if we're talking about hyper-advanced civilizations that could theoretically harness the power of black holes, well, we could also be talking about civilizations that could engineer their own stars, and perhaps even engineer their own planets as well. And this is another interesting discovery that we've made recently. In the Orion Nebula, the James Webb Space Telescope has found no less than 540 planetary mass objects, apparently rogue planets that seem to be wandering around inside the nebula. Now that in itself is not all that strange. However, 40 of these planets, some of which are as small as 0.6 Jupiter masses, so not terribly large for forming inside a nebula, are bound up in binary pairs. That's right, not just one binary pair, not two, but 40 planets caught up in binary pairs orbiting one another. This defies all natural explanation. Nobody has the slightest idea as to how this could have come about naturally. Under ordinary circumstances, rogue planets, especially smaller rogue planets that are smaller than Jupiter, are ejected from their home solar systems. How do you get 40 planets that have been ejected from their home solar systems that are orbiting one another in pairs. Now, I'm sure some of you are groaning at this point and saying this guy sees aliens everywhere. Well, I'm not saying that these phenomena are artificially created or built by some sort of super civilization, but until we have a solid natural explanation, we should also pursue the artificial. It's only reasonable. And given the fact that we now know that it is possible to push planet-sized spacecraft between the stars and that to do do so, you need to be in close proximity to black holes, well, we should at least be trying to find techno-signatures in these regions, and perhaps we've already found them. Thank you very much for watching, please like, please subscribe, also if you want me to make more material like this, well I'd like to see this video get 4,000 likes, I know we can do it guys, and also please check the description for various ways to support this content, oh yeah, and also please make your opinions known in the comments, I'm sure you're going to do that anyway, but I'd love to hear your interpretations for these new discoveries, and as always, Stay angry about space.